We go to Sports Talk. We've got the guy, Lake Lewis Jr., joining us today. Commanders insider, NFL insider. Always great to talk some Commanders football with you, Lake. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. I'm good, Natalie. It's been a long time since we've done this. <laughs> it has been a long time. A normal sports talk. Usually I steal you coming off the field for some post-game stuff, but I'm glad we get to sit down. We're not talking about a win this week, unfortunately, but, you know, a quick turnaround. The Commanders taking on the Eagles tomorrow. Primetime game, Thursday night football. We'll dive into that in just a little bit, but I want to go back to last Sunday, that one-point loss to the Steelers. You know, you argue a few plays go the Commanders' way. We're talking about a different outcome, but you know best that a few plays don't break down the full story of the game so in your opinion what is the story to that commander's one point loss I mean I think they can walk away from this game feeling like yet again that they competed against a, a, a team that a lot of people feel like may make a long run into the playoffs as far as the Steelers so you never want to lose especially at home and especially in games when you're up 10 in the third quarter because they were up 24-14 and, and still had a chance to even put the game further out of reach and they missed on plays. Jake missed the deep pass to Luke McCaffrey uh, from their one yard line. It could have, you know, opened it up even more. So I, I think this game goes back to Natalie, just a lot of mistakes, a lot of drop passes, a lot of plays that kept you from getting the W against a Pittsburgh team. That's a really good football team. But, you know, speaking with guys in the locker room after that game, I think Terry McLaurin said it best. Just the reporters in the locker room could tell how quiet that place was. What did you hear from players? What was the overall vibe following that loss? I mean, just, you know, guys saying, you know, you can go back and clean some things up, but they proved to themselves they were right there. I mean, make no mistake about it. These guys, if they weren't sure how good they were, they, they proved it. Uh, they most of them feel like they should have won the football game. And I think a lot of us, you know, covered the same feels like they should have won the football game. I'm sure fans feel the same way. You, you never want to hang your hat on a loss. But if you do have to hang your hat on a loss, um, if you weren't sure, because now you're playing a, a team that had only had two losses, just like you going into the game, because, you know, Natalie, everyone was saying, oh, they haven't played anyone. They didn't beat anybody, you know, but now, you went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, literally, with the team that has the second-best record in the AFC. You probably should have beat them. So you should feel good about yourself. Well, we're going to find out, you know, literally not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and based on that, I mean, is that an argument that people can still make? You know, you lose to the Bucs, a team that has faltered this second half in the season. But, I mean, you lose to the Ravens, who are surging. You lose to the Steelers. So can people still make that argument, you know, we're sitting here at seven and three, but still the commanders really haven't beaten anyone. Well, they can't say that anymore because I mean, there's a team out West and the Arizona Cardinals is in first place in their division and they're starting to surge as well. And Washington beat the stuffing out of them in their building in Arizona. So uh, even Cincinnati, I mean, last week, Cincinnati on Thursday night was, you know, a couple of plays away from beating Baltimore. But, you know, the NFL is a league of parody right now. So you, you can't really use that moniker that you haven't played against anyone because on any given Sunday, you can lose a football game. Uh, but I think for Washington, yet again, there are three losses against teams that were playoff teams. And the last thing, Natalie, is Washington did this without key players. No Brian Robinson on offense. Um, you know, Cornelius Lucas was out uh, in the game. Tyler Beattis went out of the game. You're starting center. Uh, then on defense, you have Marshawn Lattimore, you know, the big free agent that or trade that you made for your corner. He didn't even play at all, and yet they still were right there with Pittsburgh. Yeah, I, I mean, that's an excellent point. And specifically with Brian Robinson, I mean, that run game was definitely impacted, not only with the running backs, but with Jaden. I mean, his legs were completely taken out of this thing. I mean, five yards, that is something we have not seen from him all season long. So based on that, as we now look ahead to this Eagles team tomorrow, is that something you think these Eagles will try to replicate? I know what the Steelers did is, I mean, they played a great game, keeping his legs essentially out of this altogether. But moving now into the second half of the season, do you think these this is something that other teams are, will try to emulate? Oh, absolutely. I mean, anytime you see success from any team, even if it's something on the offensive end, yeah, even on special teams, if you're Washington now, uh, you, you better, you know, keep your head on the swivel because the Eagles may try to fake one on you too, like Pittsburgh did. Uh, you know, one of the big plays in the Pittsburgh game was with Jaden and his legs was, you know, he tried a, a quarterback uh, draw. And, you know, if, if he's not tripped up by, I think Benton was the linebacker for Pittsburgh, he may take that 60 yards to the house. Yeah. So those are little things that if you're the Eagles, yeah, you may feel like Pittsburgh was there all day, 
Um, but the Eagles don't have a TJ Watt as well. <laughs> so little things like that, you know, play a big difference. The Eagles are starting two rookies in their secondary, Natalie. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, had Joey Porter, who's having a really great, great second season. Um, and then, of course, Mika Fitzpatrick, who's a Pro Bowl safety. So it's a little different um, is from a talent standpoint. The Eagles, you know, have a great front four. But I think as far as the back end, I think Washington can make some plays but when it comes to now looking to Thursday night tomorrow, you know, what do you think this one comes down to? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Natalie. For me, it, it's if it, is Brian Robinson going to play, you know, and, and you know, you, you kind of feel like they held out a lot of these guys, even Marshawn Lattimore, because you knew that the big the bigger game was against the Eagles because this is your division rival. This is a game that has you know, implications as far as not just winning the division, but playoff implications. But I do think it comes down to Washington being able to sustain their running game because when they run the football all year long effectively, their offense has just really lit teams up all season. Nope, that's a good point. And essentially, we've reached that time of the year where every team across the league, they are dealing with some sort of injury. But I think everyone can agree the sooner we can get Brian Robinson back on that field, the better this commander's team will certainly be. Lake Lewis Jr. joining us today on Toyota Sports Talk. Lake, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for giving us some time. All right, my friend. Good seeing you. Good seeing you, too. We'll catch up soon. But for now, stay with us. We've got much more Toyota Sports Talk coming your way in just a few minutes.